My name is Dan Coughlin, I'm the Director of Emergency Management. Laura well, Rodriguez, um, ASMAC Chief. Very good. Our office was leaning forward on, on this incident pretty far as, as early as last Friday and Saturday. Uh, we had actually made some unmet needs requests or potential unmet needs requests for like water and MRIs and, and generators and things. MRAs? I'm sorry. MRAs? MRAs, MRAs. MRAs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we participated in a whole lot of conference calls over the weekend between uh, Pima and the National Weather Service and, and we got updates like every six or eight hours. A lot of that information I shipped to the commissioners and forwarded some of those briefings to the commissioners. Our office staff assembled at 6, six o'clock a.m., 6 a.m. on Monday, um, again, trying to get an early start and a handle on, on this storm. Uh, we watched it progress, actually, officially, uh, had the OC activation at 12 o'clock, had the disaster declaration executed. Uh, essentially, our office was staffed with our office personnel primarily at first, and then we subsequently had the representation from the fire service, uh, American Red Cross, and uh, we utilized a couple of our dispatchers in training uh, to answer phones and give that sent them some experience in you know, a real life situation. So I think that was pretty effective. I think mm -hmm. they learned a lot, and, and having an extra warm body there uh, made it a little bit easier too. Uh, things wind, wound down. I hate to say it this way, but I think everybody kind of realizes that Lebanon County got off light right now. Um, we're not seeing a lot of significant damage. Uh, we didn't see as much of the wind damage as we anticipated. A lot of trees down, a lot of poles down, wires down, that type of thing. Um, but really, I, I, we, we got off light. I hate to say that too loud, but we stood down in REOC or our office 4 o'clock on Tuesday. Not to say that we're not going to continue with uh, following up on disaster preparations and specifically damage assessment. I'd, I'd like just to take a minute and kind of hammer that. Um, if you guys could help. Damage assessment is one of the most difficult parts of my job, and it always has been. You know, we can run, we can, we can work 24 hours, we can stand up, you know, for six, seven, eight, ten days, whatever we have to do. But when it's all over, okay, whether Le Lebanon County gets uh, declared is going to depend on the, the, the amount of damage that we have specifically uninsured damages. Uh, we typically reach out to local coordinators, uh, some of the fire chiefs, fire companies, they, they supply some of that information. Um, I'm not getting a lot of that back right now. I actually sent that message out. And I'm going to be calling, actually sitting down and calling the municipalities this afternoon just to put them on notice. Again, it, it's a difficult thing, but FEMA is on us to get these preliminary damage assessments in like yesterday. Uh, and I'll give you an example of going back to Lee. Uh, we were in the, the, the office probably four or five days straight, finally shut down on, on Saturday, Friday evening. Saturday morning, Pima's is on the phone. They want our damage assessments put in their computer system by 3 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. So that's how quickly they, they push these things through. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what moves that or you know, what the impetus is, but the bottom line is we're under a gun need to get this information uh, into us. It really doesn't make any difference to me if, if they submit it to their local municipality or even if they have to call us. You know, we'll, we'll manage to, to staff the phones and, and take that information if, if, that's, if that's the only way we can get it. But I really encourage the local coordinators, the leadership in the municipalities, um, municipal, municipal authorities, that type of thing. Whatever they can do to help me collect that information from their municipalities would be highly appreciated. We have, obviously we have some office staff, and typically what we try and do is, is if we don't get that information and I get information about a certain area that was particularly hard hit, we'll send our guys out on the street and we'll attempt to do our own damage assessment. Uh, we don't want to see anybody left out of this, and then sometimes that's the only option we really have. Honestly, we don't know every nook and cranny in, this, in the county. We don't know, you know some of the places and, and homes and things like that that are maybe in your community that along the the river or something, you know, um, we, we, just, we just don't have access to that information. Your municipalities do, your local fire companies do, your local coordinators should, they should know their community, and they should know where to go look quicker than, than we can. But again, if, if we need to go out and do an assessment in the community, we'll be glad to do that. We'll, we'll get it done. But uh, I, I need that information. I need it, you know, as soon as possible. The team is waiting on it right now. So the damage assessment thing, whatever you can do to help me get that done. Um, we opened up 
Temple Red Cross shelter out at the um, Expo Center. I'm sure you're aware of that. At one point, we had a staff that I believe as high as 33 people, maybe. Um, they are taking that shelter down as of this morning or as we speak. Uh, they still have arrangements with the Salvation Army okay, to house people and shelter people who are without power and, and need some place to stay or go. The Salvation Army is hosting that. Um, they have cots up there. They've got the space. They've got the warm meals. They've got, you know, they, 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 they're a real asset to us. So they're stepping forward as the American Red Cross closes the shelter down. Um, one of the things that, that, that's been asked of me is, is about CARP. And I noticed when I looked at the shelters in Pennsylvania, um, not all shelters listed, or maybe they had it, but not all shelters listed the fact that there was resources there to bring your pets with you. Okay? Um, there's only a couple or three that were actually listed, and, and I've received a lot of good comments about that forward thinking. Um, CARP Volunteer staff, okay, they have difficulty you know, coming up with volunteers to go out there and do that. Uh, it's something that they manage themselves. We don't really have a whole lot of involvement in it except maybe getting them dispatched or, you know, generator support or something like that. So I'd like to put a plug in for CART because, like I said, I, it makes us look good. It makes this county look, look good. And, and I think their efforts out there maybe go underappreciated. At least they're not high profile, you know. Uh, like I said, they deserve some recognition for that. That's about all I have. County Animal Rescue Team. I see yeah. back in the <coughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I'd just like to personally say thank you to you, to Juan, to Brian, to John, your whole team down there, the 911 telecommunicators. Everyone worked round the clock. I heard no tempers flaring. Everyone was professional. Uh, it was such a well-run operation. You all deserve kudos. So, yes, the American Red Cross, the Salvation Army, the Animal Response Team, they too deserve kudos. But I'm just so proud of our staff here at Lebanon County and, and can, can't say enough to commend you for your job well done. Thank you. I thank you, and I'll be sure to pass that on. Thank you. Oh. No, I've, I've already... Uh, been down to uh, EMA yesterday to uh, essentially to say the same things that Commissioner Litz has said. Uh, I think uh, my position is that we hire good people and uh, we expect them to do the job and we're certainly pleased when they when they deliver so and we're very grateful for that service so thank you. Last week uh, or two weeks ago we had the assessment folks in and we, so we as we go through our um, learning our jobs uh, as new county commissioners, we get these, you know, better insights into the good people we have around us. And uh, this past weekend and the last couple of days, we had that experience with your department. So we get a, you know, to focus uh, for a couple uh, days on what's going on and how you you operate. And boy, I'll tell you, it's it's a wonderful thing to have as an asset for our county to have you folks uh, uh, as responsible and, and educated as you are in your profession to. Uh, get us through all that. So 